1999. Um, would the clerk please call the roll? Chairman Groff? Here. Councilor Berry? Here. Councilor Carson? Here. Councilor Fritz? Here. Councilor McGinty? Here. Councilor Reed? Here. And Councilor Watson? Here. The Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome. Um, I guess it is. As at all our meetings, the first order of business is citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there any citizen who wishes to discuss a matter not on the agenda? If there is, please come to the podium and state your name and address, please. I'm Richard Hall. My address is 35 Reef Road in Shore Acres, 38 years a resident of Cape Elizabeth. I have a small request for the council. On our spring and fall cleanup every year, we have a set pattern. We do Shore Acres, Preble first, somebody else, somebody else, and somebody last. Well, this is fine, but Shore Acres has a lot of trees. And I'd like to see it reverse so we get a break every once in a while. I'm not saying every year, but all you have to do is just reverse the patent every time. So that's my request. I'd just like to see it reversed. I had a neighbor call the road department and was told, well, that's the way it's done. That isn't the way it has to be done. It can be reversed. That's what I would like. Thank you very much. Thank you. Seems like an easy request. Is there any other citizen that wishes to address an item not on the agenda tonight? Hearing none, we now have a presentation uh, for uh, Lee Chase. Come join the club here. Good evening. Forget what you're doing. As I've said many times, this is the most fun part of my job. Cape Elizabeth Town Council. There's a proclamation. Uh, Leroy M. Chase. Whereas Leroy M. Chase was a founding member of the Cape Elizabeth Fire Police Unit and has been its captain for its eight years of existence. And whereas Lee's leadership has brought much professionalism to the fire police unit and has made it a vital cog in our public safety response effort. And whereas during Lee's service as captain, the fire police unit assisted our police and fire departments during over 650 calls for help with traffic control and other needs. And whereas Lee's service as captain has enhanced both the safety of the general public and our police employees and fire and rescue volunteers who respond to scenes. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Cape Elizabeth Town Council in Town Council Assembled does hereby thank Leroy M. Chase for his service as captain of the fire police unit, and we wish him well as he continues as a loyal member of the unit. Congratulations, and thank you. Thank you very much. I have a few loyal supporters out here. Uh, I guess the only thing I would say, I greatly appreciate this. It's been a lot of fun. Wish more people would come out and help us out. It would really be great. Thank you very much. Councillors' reports and correspondence. Is there any councillor with a report? Councillor Reed. It's more like a comment, and it really has to do with the last uh, agenda item. Uh, we just saw um, Mr. Chase up there because of his volunteerism to the town on the fire police unit, but many of us who've sat up here over the years know that uh, when there used to be uh, people manning or 
staffing the cameras, he was doing that as well. And we've, uh, over the years, seen him on many times, pulled out of the audience to make a comment regarding an MDOT question. Uh, so I just would like to say thank you, Lee. It's been nice over the last 10 years to see you, and it's nice to see you get a presentation. Any other counselor? Um, Any. I just wanted to address my council and citizens for a moment. I had the interesting and uh, nice experience this week of addressing um, about 12 members from Moldova. Moldova, right? I, I did look it up on the map. It's to the right of Romania. And um, these were all mayors of their small community from that, uh, communities from that country, and they were on a 17-day trip to the United States, and they go, they're actually up in the county, I think, uh, as we speak. But my task was to speak to them on how to run a small town uh, political campaign, um, which I have had a lot of experience in doing. And so I did. I gave them a step-by-step -step, uh, program as to the way I ran my campaign. And I brought materials and showed them what I had done. It was, a very, it, it was interesting. The questions were very interesting. I think the sort of, of all the questions that were asked, there was sort of a, a a permeating kind of idea, and that was, which they asked in several ways, and that was, how do you get, talking about the council, how do you get everyone to cooperate uh, to get to move forward a vote? Now, this is a country that is now an independent country that was under communist rule before. They have about 15, one of the individuals said he had about 15 people on his, whatever the name is, a, a council, and they were all representing 15 different political parties. So I did agree that certainly cooperation would be a little difficult to get. And they are young at trying it. They are very anxious. And they spoke frequently about that their only goal is to bring democracy into their communities um, and try and make it work. They, they are having, of course, trouble like most of Russia is. They, they asked how much we got paid. They were quite surprised to find out that it was, whatever it is, $10 a meeting. Um, but that they get paid now to be, to be mayor uh, they get paid in sugar or potatoes. There's no cash uh, for them. Um, so things are hard. But it was indeed very interesting. They did present us with several things. They really, I think, had a good time. This comes from their country. This is a handmade rug. This is referred to, they called him, when they tried to translate it, Stephen the Great. He was their ruler. He was a saint. He was a ruler in the 16th century, and he is a symbol of wisdom and strength. So they presented this, and I guess we'll find a place to hang this up at the, the front of the building, um, because it was indeed a nice visit. It, it, I, I wish I could think of some of the other questions. I don't want to take up more time. I think, but I do think it was interesting that cooperation was so important to them. They couldn't figure out how we arrived after discussion with a single vote that would either up or down the issue, and then you'd move on to the next one. But anyway, that was my task on Friday, and it was really fun, and I enjoyed it. Thank you on behalf of the council for <clears throat> completing that task. Councilor Watson. I wanted to bring uh, to everyone's attention uh, a, a memo that we had uh, given to us by our town manager that was written by our student representative, Matt Martin, who brought to the attention of um, Bob, Bob Malley and, and Michael a problem that we had with one of our roads and that needed um, some salt and some greater attention. So I was um, very pleased to see that our student representatives have stepped over the boundary of sitting and listening to actually becoming real proactive and seeing things happen. And I thought that was important to share with, with everybody. Thank you. Anyone else? Town manager's report. Mr. McGovern. Yes. And the interest of quite a few folks here this evening on other issues, I'll uh, delay my comments until next month. Oh, my heart is broken. <laughs> <laughs> the minutes of the previous meeting of January 11, 1998, is there a motion in that regard? Councillor Reed? I move approval as written. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded that the minutes of January 11, 1998, be approved as written. All in favor? Opposed? Seven to nothing. Moving right along, uh, item number 87, receipt of report of town farm ordinance and easement drafting 
uh, committee. Uh, Tom Emery, you were the chair of that uh, illustrious group, were you not? Yes, I was. And perhaps you could uh, come to the podium, and we'd be glad to uh, receive this report from you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I'd like to say that I found as a resident of uh, Juniper Lane and, and the Brentwood neighborhood that we have no trouble at all with our limbs. We just simply take them over to Shore Acres during <laughs> nighttime hours. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Council. Uh, indeed, uh, I was the chairman of the Ordinance and Easement Drafting Committee. Uh, I first of all would like to thank uh, my fellow committee members, uh, John Chapman, who was a citizen representative, uh, Robert Danielson, uh, who was a land trust representative and provided uh, significant insight in terms of legal interpretations, uh, Councillor Fritz, uh, John Green from the Conservation Commission, uh, Rosemary Reed, a uh, town councillor, and Ann Wacker, also a citizen representative. Uh, also, I see in the audience Peter Rand. Uh, certainly Peter, as, as everyone knows, has been involved uh, throughout the, both the drafting of the original report, the uh, technical report, as well as uh, this easement. Uh, I think what I'm most pleased with uh, presenting this evening is that we finished on time, on schedule, and as far as I know, on budget. Um, I'm further uh, fascinated to uh, report this evening that uh, we provided a, a draft zoning ordinance that uh, encompasses three pages and uh, elected to, uh, which was fully endorsed and supported by the committee. Uh, and in addition, uh, we felt, uh, given the, the enormous amount of discussion and input by some land trust members as well as the general public, to also provide a draft easement uh, for the uh, council's consideration, which comprises uh, simply a page and a half. Uh, the draft zoning ordinance uh, before you uh, defines the district boundaries. And for anyone who's at home and not familiar with the area that we're uh, discussing this evening, it's the upland portions of the uh, former poor farm property, now known as the town farm. Uh, the reason that the marsh and the other areas aren't specifically included in this uh, district is that it's already protected under our resource protection ordinances. Uh, we have a purpose statement in the ordinance and I uh, assume as always that this ordinance will go to the council committee and, and uh, be quite a public process but any questions regarding the uh, ordinance itself I think should be uh, referred to the purpose statement. We spent countless hours uh, discussing that and fine-tuning the language. We have a very limited list of permitted uses and conditional uh, uses. I think, generally speaking, uh, for the public's benefit, uh, this ordinance is different than the Fort Williams Park ordinance, although somewhat similar, and that the uh, committee did not see this uh, as a park as it was more of an issue of, of protecting open space for the uh, benefit of the public. We have a uh, second, or, or the uh, open space easement which is in front of you which is broken into uh, several concise sections and again for the public at home is a uh, concise purpose statement a description of the use the issue of how it would be enforced uh, which for the benefit of the public would be uh, reside with the town council general terms uh, regarding third party issues, which again would be uh, at the express uh, consent of the town council. Uh, and then uh, background information on the basis of the easement. Uh, given the fact that there are 18 items on this evening's agenda, I, I'll leave it at that. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I also should uh, I'd be remiss in not thanking Maureen O'Meara, who is our ex officio member, who aside from of all, all of our discussions interpreted that took diligent uh, uh, meeting notes and reported back and, and helped uh, and actually drafted much of the language that's in front of you this evening. Thank you very much. You. Is there a motion? Uh, As a member of the committee, I'd like to uh, make a motion. I, what's on the table at this point in time is a motion to receive the report. That was my motion. Fine, thank you. To, to receive the report and um, I would like to also move that the that the town farm ordinance portion of it be referred to the town planning board for their recommendations. Not the ordinance committee? 
to the planning board, it, I think, is the the usual route. Mr. McGovern. Yeah, it, it, if the town council wishes to consider the enactment of an ordinance, it does need to be referred to the planning board prior to uh, being considered. The, the suggestion had been that it go to the ordinance committee because that would keep it with the council while you're also considering the easement portion of it. But if, if uh, Councillor Fritz wishes to have it go first to the planning board, obviously that motion is in order and is in keeping with the procedure that before it be enacted would have to go to the planning board. I'm sorry, could you restate the motion? Move that the uh, town council uh, receive the report of the uh, town farm ordinance and easement drafting committee and that the report, or that the ordinance itself be referred to the planning board for its recommendations. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Councillor Barry seconds the motion. Discussion. Councillor Watson, we'll go right down the line. Chairman Graff, I have a question. Does that mean that we are saying that we want them to also respond to the easement? I didn't hear that in the motion. I okay, it's just the ordinance, zoning ordinance. It makes sense to me that we separate out the, the discussion of yes. the, the two portions. I agree with you. Okay. Councilor Reed. Um, I served on that committee, and I'm concerned about a couple of issues, and that is the attorney's letter that we have at our um, podium tonight that has not been public. In Let, let's stop right there so the public. Uh, our town attorney, Thomas Leahy, dated February 5th, 1999, has written a letter to the town manager in which he discusses the conservation easement proposed for the town farm property, as is our custom when our attorney addresses the town council. Uh, that matter is, this letter has not been made public until the town council has an opportunity to see it. This letter is not in the form of, a, in my view at least, and I believe in the town managers, of a privileged communication of any kind. And uh, this letter from Tom Leahy will certainly be made available to all members of the public. But I didn't want anyone to think that uh, this letter had gone anywhere other than be on the podium tonight for town councilors to see for the first time immediately prior to this meeting. I'm sorry to interrupt. Well, no, but that was my point. And I was wondering if it wouldn't be more appropriate to uh, refer this to the Ordinance Committee first, because we have additional information. And I just wanted to ask, uh, Ms. Jamery, did you say that the committee as a whole endorsed the easement language? Because I do take a... No, quite to the contrary. Okay. I, I don't think I referred to that at all. They okay. endorsed the uh, zoning ordinance, but I didn't Absolutely. state one way or the other regarding the easement. It was in the memo, however, okay. that it was not endorsed uh, by all committee members. Okay. That was the only um, point of discussion. So I just thought it might be more appropriate to keep it within the council's ordinance committee first before we ask the planning board to do something that may or may not be outside the scope of what the town council ultimately wants. Yeah. Well, let, I'm going to go right down the line. If anybody, sorry, I'm still listening. Okay. Anybody? Okay. Go ahead, Carol. Well, if, if I might just suggest that my motion really has to do simply with the ordinance uh, wording, and the, the planning board usually takes that up before the council takes it up. The easement is another issue. It seems to me that we may or may not want to do at this time, but. It seems to me establishing um, the town farm district mm -hmm. is something we really do want to do. And I doubt from past discussions that I've heard from the council that this is outside the realm of what the council would want to do. Um, Thank you. Councilor McGinty, uh, you're chairman of uh, the ordinance committee. What's your thoughts on this matter? If we're just talking about the ordinance itself, um, I think it should be referred to the planning board um, outside of the easement issue. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I will support that. Um, I think the easement issue is another issue. So um, I can support referring the ordinance itself to the planning board. Councillor Berry, do you wish to be heard? Same thing. Does anyone else wish to uh, be heard on this matter? 
motions in order for a vote at this time. Uh, my understanding of the motion is that the ordinance and ordinance alone would be referred to the planning. The report would be received and included in the report that's being received would be the easement language. But then what would happen is simply the portion of the report that has to do with the, uh, the ordinance would be referred to the planning board. And that's the totality of the motion. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. All in favor? Opposed? Seven and nothing. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'd like to further move that um, the manager be directed to prepare with representatives of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust a final draft conservation easement in conformance with that proposed by the Town Ordinance and Easement Drafting Committee in its February 1, 1999 report and report to the Town Council by April 99. Is there a second to that motion? Hearing none, the motion fails. Is there any other motion at this time uh, concerning this particular item, which is item 87? Councilor Carson. Under what circumstances will we take up the easement to, for discussion? It's recommended by the report. Well, unless there's, if there is a motion, uh, we can. It's not recommended, but it is, it is included. Mm -hmm. included. Well, let's go through the conceivable possibilities mm -hmm. without the chair taking a position on any of them. It seems to me that the town council could simply do nothing because uh, by the terms of this uh, committee's assignment, an easement was optional and the town council could theoretically do nothing, receive the report as any report and not do anything with it. Secondly, the, uh, the issue of an easement could be held in abeyance, table, until the planning board has an opportunity to review the ordinance and the town council sees what comes out of the ordinance, uh, that could be done. Third, the ordinance, I mean the, uh, uh, the easement could be referred to a town council workshop at this time. Fourth, uh, well, the, it could be referred to uh, anywhere else. I assume that the town council wishes to refer it, I mean, to a staff member, but that motion was not seconded. Uh, if anybody on the town council can think of another option, uh, please feel free to pipe up. So, uh, without uh, any correction, I believe that, uh, in general terms, uh, sets forth our options. Does that answer your question? Yes, my question. Um, I'm, I'll, Mr. Chairman, I will move that we set the issue to a town council workshop, the next one that we have um, scheduled. A second. It's been moved and seconded that uh, the easement portion of this report be forwarded to a town council workshop uh, to be set up as expeditiously as possible, hopefully the next one. Discussion, Mr. McGinty. First of all, I want to say, and I think we all agree on this council, all seven of us, that we're not going to do anything with this property. We're not going to start building condos on or anything like that. We decided that, I think, I think we are all in a unanimous agreement on that. Um, and so it's just a matter of deciding how we're going to protect the property. Not that it's going to be protected, how we're going to protect it. I'll make that very clear for everybody. Um, second thing, I would, I'm not, I'm not going to support this motion um, only because let's hear back from the planning board. Let's go through the process and do it step by step. And I mean, that's, that's my opinion. Uh, again, there's no way we're doing anything with this property, at least as long as I'm sitting up here, I mean, other than maintain it. Um, and I would rather go through the process, the planning board, if it's ordinance committee, whatever comes next, let's go through the process. And uh, that, you know, that's how I feel about this. Councilor Reed. Yeah, I'd like to add emphasis to that. We just voted, voted 7 0 to send it to the Planning Board for the Ordinance Committee, the Town Council previously and currently, and I'm sure future, is not going to be doing anything with this property. I remind the Town Council and members of the public in the next three months we have three regular meetings and six workshops, and that's without dealing with any of these other issues that are, in my opinion, non urgent and non 
essential at this point because there are no plans for development on this property and I would ask the council to take a bit of a wait and see attitude and let the planning board do its work on the ordinance language and not um, suggest that there is some rush to get something taken care of that uh, we've already identified as a non-issue. Further discussion? The chair will comment that I obviously was on the original committee and uh, was a very strong advocate of maintaining this property as open space and getting it out of our R2 zone and having a special zone. And I would like to commend uh, the committee and Maureen for doing, I believe, an excellent job in further thrashing through the issues and uh, attempting to design a special zone for this special piece of property. Um, I personally would like to see all the town's effort right now without precluding whether there should be an easement in the future or not an easement. I would like to see, because evidently some people want to split this up at this time, uh, that we get done that process. I don't want anything to delay that process. And um, I do not believe that if we end up talking about this easement before we even talk about the zoning, that we're doing anybody a service. I would love to have the zoning done, a real consensus in this town, a vote of seven to nothing on the town council, a public, boy, that is great, because now you can sit there and uh, be assured that you're going to walk from our town hall, uh, or be able to see from our town hall, uh, and walk and, and visualize all the way to Scarborough. I, would, I want that to happen. And I'm for anything that slows up that process. Now, I would be very amenable once we got done, once that process is complete and all the language is worked out and we vote, and I know we're going to vote to keep this open space, uh, then to sit there and make an informed, rational decision over a period of time. Because remember, there's no rush for this one. None of us, this property is sitting there and we're doing nothing with it right now, and we're not going to do anything with it, then make a rational decision with public comment, with workshop, about the propriety of an easement. And I have an open mind about that issue. Now, I had previously in this, um, in my exposure in this committee for years, I had been someone that indicated that an easement under no circumstances would I support it. I still have many, many questions. I am a firm supporter of the fact that we need to get this out of the R2 zone and we need to make this a special zone and then we can take the next step and give it the uh, review that it deserves rather than the rush. And I don't understand why you're trying to put the cart before the horse except for someone's own personal agenda. Further comment? Hearing none, let's call them a, uh, the items called to a vote. All in favor of the motion? Two. Opposed? Five. Motion fails. Um, is there another motion in this regard on concerning item 87? Mr. Chairman, I will, I will move that the, um, the issue of the easement be tabled until after we hear back from the planning board. Is there a second to that second. motion? A second. Second. All in favor? Uh, the motion's tabled until after, uh, uh, at this point in time, after the town council hears back from the planning board. All right. Um, Item number 88, Cons well, before we get to that item, is there any member of the town council that, who has an objection to uh, the 
town attorney's letter being made public and uh, being received as a letter in this particular meeting. No. Councilor Reed. Um, I would also move that it be included in the packet that's sent to the planning board for their consideration. Yeah. If that's a motion, I'll second that. I think it should be made public. I have no problem with that. All right. It's been moved that the letter be made public and that this letter uh, also be forwarded to the planning board along with being made available to any interested citizen. Further discussion? Just a comment that, that, again, we're sending the ordinance to the planning board, not the easement issue. So it seems like it's not quite relevant to what they're um, being asked to do. I, I think the motion was to make it part of the pack, the part of the, the packet. part of the packet, which was included the easement with no recommendation, et cetera, et cetera. So. My understanding is that this motion is that this letter is included in the packet. The planning board, what's been referred to the planning board is the ordinance. But the planning board has the rights of any other citizen in Cape Elizabeth that they can utilize any public document for any purpose they see fit. So we're not, by doing this, uh, forwarding the uh, easement to the planning board. Is that, am I correct in that understanding? All, right. All in favor? Opposed? Seven to nothing. Passes. Item number 78, uh, consideration and proposal to expand sewer service area to include property owned by the Roman Catholic Bishop of Portland. Excuse er me, Mr. Chairman, I think that's number 88. I'm sorry, number 88. Consideration and proposal to expand sewer service area to include property owned by the Roman Catholic Bishop of Portland. Bren U37-4, closed Bren, at the intersection of Route 77, Two Lights Road, and Broad Cove Road. Mr. McGovern, uh, noting that you have uh, uh, disclosure that you are a member of this congregation, uh, please comment on this. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We received a letter from the Reverend Michael J. Henschel, the pastor of St. Bartholomew's Church, on behalf of the Roman Catholic Bishop of Portland, the owner of uh, property located at the intersection of Two Lights Road, Broad Cove Road, and Route 77 and Wheeler Road. Uh, they, would, uh, they are undergoing a, a building project, renovating the church, as well as adding a parish hall and other improvements to the property. Uh, the, they have had their sewer system inspected, the current sewer system, and while it, it does not meet the codes if it were to be put in today, it, it very clearly uh, is meeting the, the needs of, of the church and the facility and is projected to do so according to the study that was submitted uh, by Albert Frick Associates and reviewed by our code enforcement officer and I believe as well by our town engineer. Uh, the church has asked, uh, as a result of the planning, uh, town planner asking, uh, that they have a backup system in place should the septic system fail. Uh, that backup system, uh, that backup would be the municipal sewer system. The municipal sewer system comes up Broad Cove Road, doesn't quite reach the church property, and the church is asking that the church property be made a part of the sewer service area under the Southern Cape Elizabeth uh, facilities plan. Councilor Reed. I'll move that the uh, sewer service area be extended as shown on this map as outlined in the memo. Second. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded that the sewer, sewer service yeah. area be extended as demonstrated on the map uh, that's been provided to the town council. Discussion. Mr. Councilor Chairman, McGinty. I have a, a question. What does that mean in real terms? I mean, last time I thought we, we had this discussion about uh, St. Bart's was they wanted to connect up and they wanted us to bring our sewer line up and they could connect and perhaps even go further. Uh, what, what does it mean to us as a town to in, make this a sewer service area? Yeah, it, it simply means that if this system were to break down and it was at some time during the middle of winter an emergency, we, we wouldn't have to have a special town council meeting in order to go through the process of allowing the book to the sewer. But the, the, the ordinance would provide through the sewer service map that they could hook up to the sewer if the system failed and they chose to. At whose cost? At their cost. And, and just so I understand, because I'm with Councillor McGinty here, if in fact they uh, wish to extend and hook up, 
how quickly could they realistically do it? I mean, is this the viable option as a backup? Usually these, set, these systems don't fail immediately. It's, you know, you know your system is, is failing and you take this option. It's, you know, there's very few of what I call catastrophic immediate failures. Though some in this room have probably experienced them. That <laughs> generally and under no circumstance, if we approve this motion, would the town be in any way uh, incurring cost to allow the church to hook up to the sewer? Is that what you're telling us? The only cost we'd be incurring is the cost to update our map. It's to what? Update our map, which is minimal. We have to just draw the, the, the extend the blue on the map up one more lot. I, I really don't understand that. I thought the last time we talked about it, we talked about sharing costs and that there was a cost for both the church and for the town. That was if the church hooked up to the sewer at this time. The church uh, worked, uh, they submitted an estimate to our engineer, our engineer looked at it. Do you remember what the cost was, Steve? <coughs> Through the channel. Sure. I'm Steve Harding. I'm the town engineer. Um, the exact cost, I, I don't really recall. Um, there was a, a question of whether or not it would be extended just to the church property or up to the intersection of Broad Cove, uh, but it was in, I'm going to say, the $40,000 range. That was more than that. Probably more Over than that. Ocean House Road. Excuse me? Up to Ocean House Road. That's correct. So if I understand things correctly, our prior discussion was because there might be some benefit to the town of sharing the cost in some way of getting the church from the sewer. The church has decided not to do that because of cost. Mm -hmm. And the church is, at this time, wants to use its own separate sewage system, which of course it has a right to do. But what the church is simply asking is that at some subsequent time, if in fact their sewer system fails, that they would have the right at their total and complete cost to hook up with the Cape Elizabeth sewer. That's do I understand it correctly? Correct. Councilor Reed. And my understanding, the reason I made this motion at this time is because of the timeliness of the issue, because of the engineering report, because of the town uh, planners, staff involvement, et cetera, now is the appropriate time to ease the mind of future facilities committees within the church organization to know that they do, in fact, have that option. Is that correct? This was really done at the request of the town planner. You know, the church was trying to comply with the request of the town planning who is not a member of the church, who does not live in Cape Elizabeth, but recognizes under the uh, planning board rules for reviewing site plans that, uh, that you should have an alternative backup system in place, particularly when you're expanding the uh, use as, as it's being done at this time. Councilor Barry. It, it, does this mean extending the, the sewer up to uh, Ocean House Road uh, at the intersection of uh Rock Cove Road? This does not extend the sewer at all. Okay. It merely allows it to be extended up to this area. Uh, yeah, See, okay. Cape Elizabeth has a, has a really odd sewer system. Right. Whereas most other communities encourage hookups to sewer, encourage revenue, we have an opposite plan that, that results in very high sewer rates, that results in, I, I, I won't go on. Oh uh, yeah, I take issue with that, so I want to go to that. <laughs> Someday we'll discuss it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, but if I understand the motion, right now all we're discussing is not anybody adding to anything, simply giving them the ability at some later time to pay full cost and add to our sewer. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'm sorry, Councilor Would, Fritz. Cause it, it was a fair distance for them to have to connect um, back, so they would connect over private property, not in the street up, you know, extending the city sewer line. I, I can't say at this point since, you know, the issue is not before us right away. The, the advantage of going the other way of extending the sewer was that we would have had a good public sewer extended up in Broad Cove Road. I mean, I think that is a way bigger policy issue if we extend the town sewer line in the road beyond where it is now, mm. that, that shouldn't be just the decision of the council like tonight. But if you're not asking that and you're not ask, uh, authorizing any kind of money in that regard or permission in that regard, 
That's not the motion. Then. Right, because, I mean, it, it just seems a little strange that we have a septic system that's functioning fine. It's been evaluated by somebody who's very respected in this field, and um, we shouldn't be needing to make that kind of requirements that they... Well, then I suggest that uh, that's an issue for the planning board. I mean, it, if I understand things correctly, part of the reason of doing this is to go forward, and I am not a member of this congregation. I'm, I'm one of those optional Catholics. I'm an Episcopalian. Um, my understanding is that they wish to be able to present that they have a backup plan that is possible. But the downside of that is, if they want to make it happen, they pay everything. That's, I think that's all there is to it. Unless I'm really missing something. Councilor Reed. Move the question, please. Yeah. Move the question. All in favor? Opposed? Six to one. Councilor Fritz opposing. Um, item 89. Receipt of the proposed master plan for the Gulf Crest property from the Facilities 2000 Committee. Mr. McGovern. Steve Harding, our town engineer, is uh, putting another map up on the, uh, the board right now. And what this shows is the master plan for the Gulf Crest property. For those that might be curious what the Gulf Crest property is, it's the, the uh, nomenclature that we're currently giving to uh, the, what was known as the Levitt property, uh, which is the 100-plus acre parcel of land that the town bought uh, next to the refuse disposal and extending over to the school grounds. Uh, what, what the plan shows is that a public works garage would go onto this property, as well as uh, a couple of ball fields, multi-purpose fields. Uh, the pos a, a space has been identified, maybe for a third field, but just a space. Uh, similarly, a space has been def uh, has been shown where tennis courts might go, but no immediate plans. There's also related parking for these facilities as well as an extensive trail network uh, throughout the entire property. As you look at that plan, even I think from a distance folks can see it, about a third of the land uh, would be developed for active recreation as well as public works purposes, and the balance, two-thirds plus of the land, would be left as, as open space. While a lot of it is quite wet, a lot of it is uh, quite passable as well. The public works garage portion is uh, over near the refuse disposal area part of the property. So you have some good adjacencies there. The Facilities 2000 Committee has worked fairly hard on this, as well as uh, the town engineer. And uh, I think it's important enough uh, that it be set for public hearing at your March 10th meeting, which is a Wednesday. Is there a motion in that regard? Councilor Reed. Yes, I uh, move that the town council receives the master plan of the Gulf Crest property from the Facilities 2000 Committee, and that we set this to public hearing at the March uh, 10th meeting at 7.30 in the town hall. There's a second. I'm sorry. Councilor Berry, you are the individual second. Yes. Discussion? I would just... Councilor McGinn. I'm sorry. I'd just like to say, I know Carol said in several of those meetings that the, the committee has worked very hard, and I mean mm -hmm. very hard, and discussed minute details about this, and uh, it, it's a good plan. It's been rearranged several times. Um, I think it's Joe... Was Joe Hennessy the engineer who was sat in a lot of that, uh, worked very uh, diligently on the building portion of it. Um, excellent job by the, c the committee, citizen committee, I might add. Uh, very, very good job. Councilor Reed. Just a note, it's taken over 10 years to get to this point, and I suggest that we move as quickly as we can, and especially in light of the fact that there will be, or could be, budgetary implications of this plan. Further discussion? I would, uh, I've served on this committee, and I would like to thank this committee uh, for all the hard work that it's done, and thank our town engineer, and thank Bill Jordan, who is the town council individual on this committee with me, and he brings good common sense to every single discussion we had. So I'd like to thank Billy, uh, and I'd certainly uh, uh, recommend to this council that we receive this master plan and set it to public hearing as soon as possible. Just if I might, we'll, we'll, we'll leave this posted up here, too, for the next month for the meeting, except when the planning board takes it down and other folks. Uh, so if anyone ever wants to come in and take a closer look at it, they're welcome to. 
Further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Opposed? Seven and nothing in favor. Thank you very much. Item number 90, request to authorize the town manager to sell a tax acquired property at lot 17 at Park Circle for $90,000. Mr. McGovern. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a lot that the town acquired back uh, shortly after the Elizabeth Farm subdivision uh, was constructed. Uh, the developer who, who put that project together ran into some financial difficulties as a result of the recession at the beginning of the 1990s. And this lot was, had many attachments on. It was a very difficult lot. The town went to a considerable effort and expense to have the, the uh, title on it quieted. Uh, we do have it assessed at a little over $75,000. Uh, the sales price is $90,000. Uh, after we pay, we had a broker selling it for us. been on the market since last May. Uh, after closing costs, the broker fees, we would have a net uh, proceeds of 82452 We would then apply the tax liability uh, that we have uh, for the taxes that would have been owed on the property, and it's proposed that the balance of the proceeds go into the land acquisition fund. So I'd like to recommend that, this pro that you authorize me to sell this property at the sales price of $90,000 with a quitclaim deed and uh, with the proceeds to first pay off the tax obligation and then with the, the balance to win to the land acquisition fund. So make that Councillor Barry. I would like to move that the uh, council authorize the town manager to uh, execute, acknowledge, and deliver a deed on behalf of the town to the tax acquired property at uh, lot 17 at uh, Park Circle for $90,000 and that he be authorized to execute any accompanying documents required to car carry out the transaction. And that was a quit claim deed, is that right? Uh, I think that was the yes, manager's uh, recommendation. Yeah, quit claim deed. Uh, we're not going to give any warranties, but uh, just for the tax acquired title. Uh, if that was a motion to sell the property, I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> Did that include the. Discussion. Councillor Reed. Yes, could that uh, motion please include uh, and that all net proceeds be placed in the land acquisition fund? Well, I believe that there were some. Uh, taxes to be paid out of the, the net right. process. Did you say the net? net. I, uh, yeah, I'd agree with that uh, uh, amendment to the motion. All right. Thank you. That's fine with the Further side. discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Mm. Opposed? Motion carries seven to nothing. Item 91 Request to refer to the Ordinance Committee a citizen proposed ordinance to govern hours and environmental issues at outdoor shooting ranges and gun clubs. Mr. McGovern, I would ask you at this point in time to uh, educate the council as to citizens' proposed ordinances and what are the options available to the council uh, concerning this item. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this petition was uh, circulated, I believe, at the polls as well as some other times uh, last November. Uh, we did receive a, a total number of signatures of 316. It was not the intent of, of the uh, circulators to have this to be a petition that would be voted on by the citizens. That would require a great, greater number of uh, signatures. I, I think you know, it's clear from the information that you received on the petition when it was first presented to you, as well as from uh, Councillor Berry's cover note, that it's the intent of the citizens that the issues that they raise be considered uh, by the town council. Uh, the, it's, the petition uh, was included with a, some specific ordinance language, uh, which, which does two things. One, uh, it, re it regulates the hours of operation for any uh, shooting range or gun club within the town of Cape Elizabeth. And secondly, it, it has an environmental condition requiring that no less often than monthly that it would require all spent bullets or other lead-bearing materials left by persons using the shooting range or gun club. Uh, to collect those. So uh, that's the gist of, of, the, of the proposal, and I would recommend that you refer to the Ordinance Committee as you do other uh, ordinance proposals that uh, aren't amendments to the uh, zoning ordinance. Councillor Berry. Uh, Mr. Chairman, since I was the one who uh, set this in motion to come before the Council, I will move that the Council uh, accept the petition referred to the Ordinance Committee, and uh, I have been uh, informed that there are state statutes uh, on uh, both on uh, rod and gun clubs and uh, 
dealing with uh, environmental issues as well. And I'm sure that these uh, issues should be addressed. And uh, if there is uh, an appropriate ordinance that can be, uh, after everyone has had an opportunity for input, I think that the uh, ordinance should be considered by the council. But first, I think that the ordinance committee should address these issues and then uh, uh, come back to the council with its recommendation. So if I understand the motion, the motion is simply to receive this petition, petition and refer, refer to the Ordinance to committee. committee. That's right. All right. Is there a second to that motion? Hearing none, the motion fails. Is there another motion on this item? Councilor Reed. Um, Mr. Chairman, in the time that I've served on the town council, I know we've had at least one workshop on this. And I would suggest that since that workshop, there have been several issues that have been brought to the attention of the town councilors through the press and uh, through the petitioners, and I suggest that we refer this to workshop before we burden the ordinance committee. And I also think that there's some information the council needs to know uh, in addition to these signatures. For example, um, you know, if the uh, Rod and Gun Club has uh, been notified of this, what the discussions have been, my understanding is there have been several meetings of the two groups. Uh, I know that there have been other parties involved, and I would like to see a full range of uh, what has gone on since the last workshop that we held on this, I believe it was uh, two years ago. So my motion would be for it to go to workshop and not to the ordinance committee. And workshop at any, uh, at the earliest possible time, convenient to the town council? Yes, but I would also say that I don't expect it to be at the March workshop because of the finance committee issues. So a, a, a workshop, but a workshop subsequent to be set, but subsequent to the month of March. Correct. Is there a second to that motion? I would second that. Council McGinty seconds. Discussion? Council Carson. Yes, I think as a, I guess as a new councilor, I need to ask, there seems to <clears throat> be a little different procedure here. I would have automatically sent this to the Ordinance Committee. Is there some uh, policy that the council has that you skip the Ordinance Committee and just go to workshop for the full council? I mean, it was my plan to send this to the Ordinance Committee. But I understand, I can see what's going on, that this everyone wants to send it to, the, to a workshop. So is there some... Well, sending reason? it to a workshop doesn't mean it will go to no, the ordinance I know, committee. but just sort of... I, is it so that everybody has a chance to speak on it instead of just the ordinance committee? Well, if I, under, that, if I understood Councillor Reed, she was interested in further understanding the issue and what progress, if any, has been made on this issue since there was a workshop two years ago before making any decisions about... Uh, referring it to the Ordinance Committee. Okay. And that would, all I'm going by is what she stated publicly. It's fair. Councillor uh, Watson. Chairman Graff, I had seven questions when I reviewed the petition for the enactment of, of the ordinance. And in a workshop, it would give all of us an opportunity to address some of those concerns. And there are several people in this audience uh, tonight that have concerns, and I'm sure they would like to have an opportunity to speak on behalf of this ordinance or, or otherwise. And as a Just so we're clear, though, a workshop is not a public hearing. Right. Okay. All right. So I don't want the public to be to confused think, yes, in that regard. That's right. Um, you're right. But it is an opportunity for them to get us the information. Absolutely. That I, yes. I just didn't want any, anything out there thinking yes. that we were authorizing a public up. hearing because that's a different issue. And if someone yes. wants to make that motion, that's fine. But a workshop is not a public yeah. hearing. And yes, you're right. Yes. Further discussion? Councilor McGinty. I was just going to say, as chairman of the Ordinance Committee, I, I don't think this issue is going to be resolved at the Ordinance Committee level. Um, and to, to Penny's remarks, I'm, I'm always a stickler for procedures. People know, and I, I object a lot of times to some of the things we do um, behind closed doors. But um, this is an issue that's been around for as, at least two years, at least. Um, you know, I, I commend Ms. Muger. She's pushing this and and keeps it in front of us, and I certainly have some questions. She's raised some good issues um, that um, i like to look at. But I don't think the Senate to the Ordinance Committee for three councilors, uh, it, it's, just, it's, it's just too big of an issue. It's going to be resolved at the council level. We might as well address it at the council level and, and deal with it in that regard. And so um, to address Penny, and, and I, I'll support the, the motion yeah. to send it to the workshop. So further discussion on the pending motion. I have no objection to uh, it being presented to a workshop, but I think the issues that are raised should be addressed uh, through the process. Uh, all, right. all that's on the table now is whether this is referred to uh, a workshop which will be held subsequent to the month of March. Yeah. Hearing no further discussion, 
All in favor? Opposed? It carries seven to nothing. Um, item 92, consideration of proposed allocation of funds held in Fort Williams Capital Fund. Mr. McGovern. Yes, you have a cover memo uh, for me on this topic as well as a, a lengthy memo that was prepared uh, by Bob Malley uh, following the recommendation of Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Uh, the Chairman of the Commission, Dan Fisher, is here, Al Bartleman and Paul Phillips, both members of the Commission, Bob Malley, Director of Public Works. Uh, what this does, it sets forth for a total of $118,000 worth of work to be done in this calendar year, all with funds, uh, $115,000 of which are all with funds raised within Fort Williams. $3,000 is from the Goddard Mansion Stabilization Account, which was voted by the Town Council back when uh, Councillor Carson was here in an earlier incarnation. Uh, incarnation. Many, many years ago. Does that make her a deity? <laughs> I don't know what it makes her. How many? Yeah. The, uh, the specific recommendations of the Commission include reconfiguring the old main entrance. There's a lot of confusion, people, as to how to get in or out. Uh, some more guardrail replacement, particularly that guardrail that's up above the beach uh, by the, the turnaround at the uh, emergency management bunker. Uh, the, most of the old roadways in Fort Williams have not been paved since we think prior to the town taking it over in 1964. And they get a lot of pedestrian use and uh, it's hoped that uh, we would main, continue to maintain them as pedestrian ways. Uh, Blattery Blair Memorial, I don't know why that's difficult to say, Battery Blair Memorial, $20,000. This would help to stabilize the memorial and then be combined with funds from the Centennial that's being raised that would, that would pay for signage and other improvements. The Centennial will be paying for signage. This money would go toward uh, improvements in, in some of the soft cost of that project as well. Uh, the bandstand is in tough shape. The Centennial is going to be having a couple of events there. They hope to have that fixed by uh, June 1st, $15,000. Some tree maintenance, $5,000. Uh, minor bleacher repairs, excuse me, uh, raised a former storage garage. This is that big garage you see over in the the big parking lot right below the parks maintenance building, right, right next to, behind the gas pump, Mrs. Carson? Yes, uh, I noticed that they use that as a form of identification since you and I painted it ourselves right. to save it. <laughs> uh, miscellaneous maintenance of 5000 4000 to paint some buildings, uh, 3000 for the Goddard Mansion, and uh, to begin to replace the perimeter fencing uh, at the park. It, that's, uh, again, is at least 35, 40 years old and uh, is be really beginning to rust away. So if you have any uh, issues with the priorities or whatever, uh, the commission's here, but I think it's safe to say that they strongly endorsed uh, moving forward with this, with this program. It's a great report. I, I have a question. Yeah, Councilor McGinty. Through the, uh, through the chair, if I could ask. Did you say you're going to take money out of the Goddard Mansion fund, that $9,000? 3000 of it to spend on the Goddard Mansion. To spend on the Goddard Mansion. Is there a motion? Councillor Reed. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll move the approval of the FY2000 listed projects for the January 21st, 1999 Fort Williams Advisory Commission Capital Improvement Plan with 115000 from the Fort Williams Capital Fund account and 3000 from the Goddard um, Mansion account being used to fund the projects. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. Councilor Fritz. Um, may I just ask a question on something that seems essential at Fort Williams that I don't see on this list, and that's um, resolving the problem of the duckweed on the pond. And I know we got a, a memo not too long ago that it was being evaluated by some scientists, and I'm just wondering whether... Through the chat, Mr. Malley, answer that question. I, mean, I would I, love for Mr. Malley. To I would like to see this resolved report. before we see have the, our see the, <laughs> the scum expert. Bob, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, feel free to elucidate, elucidate on the problems of duckweed. It's quite a lead-in. Um, we actually did a mechanical skimming of the duckweed last year that seemed to work pretty well. We actually used an oil boom to skim across the pond, and that's. That was one of the options that was recommended and probably the best way to deal with it, other than putting chemicals in the pond, because there are fish in the pond. So they, they recommended that a mechanical skimming, which we did a couple, three times a year, would make a difference down there. 
Can I ask a question of uh, Council Bob? Mcgill. Is that something we have to uh, uh, farm out the uh, No, we did, we did it ourselves. Oh, we have it. Okay. Yeah. So we don't need to add a line item in, no, in there on, no. on this, it doesn't. Further discussion on the pending motion? I, Councilor McGinty. I apologize to Bob for my <laughs> comment. I'm sorry. For the scum comment? <laughs> um, I will say that last year I voted against this budget for Fort Williams, and I love Fort Williams, and um, I was opposed to the sidewalk being added. And I will admit I was wrong. Um, I think it, it really worked out well, the sidewalk that goes up the road. Um, I was opposed to it. And I was wrong, and it, it came out very well. And so this year, I will support uh, the budget. And uh, well, that's it. I'll just say that. Further discussion? Mm -hmm. Councilor Reed. Can I make a quip? Notice how close quip? the 99,143 would be to a centennial target of 100,000. I just thought I'd point that. <laughs> <laughs> close, but no cigar. Right. Um, I just wanted to make Councilor. one more comment, if I might. Um, I, I think the, the stone wall work that's been done on the, gar on the, um, pond. the pond, Lily Pond, um, is just really excellent. Uh, and I, I, I was also very pleased to see in here that we're talking about adding an upper wall and reconstructing that. I've been trying to find some pictures to try and see what that wall actually looked like. Um, so that we could reconstruct it historically. I haven't been successful at that, but I'm, I'm glad that's in the plan, because I think it'll really make an additional improvement to the pond. The, the chair has one comment, and that is that I have spent tonight a portion of this evening signing thank you notes for those of you that have donated to the Fort Williams Centennial Celebration. Uh, I encourage all of you to donate to this worthy project. Uh, if, in fact, the donations, it, this will dovetail nicely with these capital improvements that we're authorizing, with the, uh, I think, stellar guidance of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, along with contributions, we here in our 100th year have a chance to make this park a showplace and something for every citizen of Cape Elizabeth to be proud of, not only now, but in the future. So if you can dig in your pocket and send a check, uh, it would be much appreciated. That was shameless, wasn't it? Yes, it was. <laughs> what shameless is you didn't mention tax deductible. That's right. It's tax deductible. <laughs> Further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Opposed? <laughs> Passes. Seven to nothing. <coughs> Thanks again to the Four Williams Advisory Commission. Yeah. We're now going to uh, go into the portion of our program where we talk about Fort Williams a little more. <laughs> Item 93, request to use Fort Williams Park by the Cape Elizabeth Little League in April, May, June of 1999. Mr. McGovern. Yeah, I'll do these collectively. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Little League would like to use their traditional spaces in April, May, and June of 99. There's a Down East British car show proposed again for September 12th with the rain date of September 12, September 19th. Uh, the Engine One Company Labor Day Weekend Art Show they'd like to do on Sundays, uh, September 5th, with a rain date of Monday, Labor Day, September 6th. Uh, the next item, Pond Cove Elementary School Springfield. They, usually we don't put these on, but it was, they did send a letter. It was approved by the commission and thought it'd be nice for the council to see that, uh, that our own students are using uh, the fort for this purpose. And the fire department would like to have a public safety day on October 9th, 1999. Is there a motion to approve? And all these were unanimously approved by the Fort Williams Advisory Commission? Or were approved by the Fort Williams? Wow. Were they approved by they the Fort Williams They were all approved Advisory by the Commission, and I believe Force unanimous. 7070. Is there a motion to approve items 93 through 97? Council I'd, I'd make that motion. I'll check. Moved and seconded that items 93 to items 97, which allow various uses of Fort Williams Park in 1999, be approved. Discussion. Uh, Mr. Councillor Berry. Mr. Manager, if, if uh, all of the scheduling in Fort Williams has been checked to see if there are any conflicts, I'm sure they have. But. Yes, Mr. Malley it has done that as well as the Commission itself. Okay, is good. Very careful. And the Centennial. Centennial. And the Centennial. Uh, there's over, uh, Al Bartleman, who serves as the Centennial Committee, and Paul Phillips, who serves on the Fort Committee. And the uh, Symphony. Both serve on both committees. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. 
Further discussion? I, I just Friends. wanted to note that the, um, the Downey's British Car Show had requested that they be able to use the field up by the lighthouse, and the Fort Williams Committee did not uh, agree to that, if I understood the writing at the... That's mm -hmm. correct. Um, but they, they also had asked that they, in, in the past, they had not been allowed to make advanced public promotion of the event, and they were asking that they would be allowed to do that because we are asking them to use their logo, or our, our logo for the centennial. Um, I worry about precedent, and, and if they do it this year, then they'll come back next year and, and want to do it. So if, if we indeed want to promote these items more extensively than is allowed in our Fort Williams policy, it should be on this one-time basis. Well, my understanding is this council cannot bind future councils in any regard. So I think well, but it your is wish part is of the our current, command. It is part of the Fort Williams Committee, or Advisory Committee's policies on the fort. And I think they clearly set forth their policy for this particular event this year. And that's all that's in front of the council mm -hmm. at this time. I, I would comment that I think that for the centennial that we're doing a lot of that. I think we're asking people to, uh, to promote the centennial and, and the fort. So, I, and like you said, uh, you know, God knows this council is not bound by prior decisions, so. Uh, I, uh, you mean to tell me I did all that work for 10 years for nothing? <laughs> <laughs> Further discussion concerning uh, items, this motion relative to items 93 to 97. Councilor Reed. Well, I just wanted to remind um, about the process. That's why the Fort Williams Advisory Commission uh, sees this first and has the first pass through and why we have the final approval. And I would like to thank the Fort Williams Advisory Commission again, and along with the Centennial Commission Committee for doing wonderful work. Further discussion? Councilor Berry. Uh, I noticed that uh, they wanted to uh, try to promote the uh, item 94 uh, with the uh, car show. Uh, Two questions I had. The organizing committee will provide the required certificate of liability. Uh, that should name the town as a named insured and in a given amount, I would think. We have a policy concerning that, and that's why the language of the required certificate and the town manager it, takes care of that. What is the required amount? I'd have to find it. It, it mirrors the Maine Tort Claims Act. Which would be $300,000. Right. All right. A minimum of $300,000. Right. All right. And then the other, it, it said at uh, the cost of two toilets. <laughs> and if you're going to have a big a group at this uh, it, uh, Down East Car Show, I mean, a, a British Car Show, is that enough? We have two additional, more. right? Yeah. But we're actually in the toilet business all summer long. And, <laughs> uh, you know, what we look for, particularly with all the events that this year, is we look for cost sharing of uh, a continuous supply of toilets. Okay. Further questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion items 93 to 97, the motion passes unanimously. Item 98, action upon citizen petition requesting a stop sign at the end of Robin Hood Road at its intersection with Little John Road. Mr. McGovern. Yes, I should have read this more carefully. Uh, if you, as you can see, the agenda really doesn't indicate what the, what the letter says. And I've discussed this with the lead petitioner. Uh, I was only made to understand this morning at the department head meeting, even though that's what the letter says, it's, is that they want the stop sign on Little John Road as, as you go down towards Fort Williams on Little John. Robin Hood comes off uh, as you're heading towards Shore Road. Uh, Robin Hood is on the right. Uh, and they want a stop sign on Little John as well as one on Robin Hood. Uh, we discussed the department head meeting this morning. The police department does have concerns with that because it opens up a Pandora's box of those types of stop signs. And what I'd like to do is to have an opportunity to work with the police department, and perhaps the community liaison officer, to discuss this with some of the people in the neighborhood to see uh, if perhaps there, there is some other solution to this issue and to table it until next month so it, you do have the opportunity to look at it again next month. But obviously, if you word it on the agenda correctly at that point, uh, that it's proposed for Little John and not for, for Rob. I'll move to table it until the next month. Sir, second the motion to table. Second. Councilor Reed. All in favor? Motion's tabled.
Okay. Item 99, action upon recommendation of the town manager to hire a consultant to review issues relating to tower locations and public safety communication needs. Mr. McGovern. Yes, the, the council is aware the planning board has been looking at the uh, proposed uh, tower ordinance that have been submitted by the communications study committee. I forget the exact name of the committee, but I think everyone knows the committee that I'm talking about. Uh, they have had quite a bit of uh, public reaction with the proposed tower location up uh, by the water tower off Avon Road, as well as uh, we also have a, a major issue in trying to figure out how to handle our public safety and public works communication needs vis-a-vis uh, -vis an antenna perhaps on the uh, Goldcrest property or up on the, the refuse disposal property. Uh, these we did issue an RFP. Uh, in fact, a number of consultants got it off our webpage, which, which was interesting. Uh, it was actually posted there for downloading. Uh, they, uh, and, and as a result, this proposal is also available on the webpage if anyone wants to look to see what they're going to do and what their experience is. Uh, it is a firm that is out of New York, uh, Flack and Kurtz, consulting engineers. However, they do have uh, a person who works for them in the Boston area who's concerned when we looked at the proposal as to what the out-of-pocket uh, disbursements may be. Uh, the estimate that we received today is approximately $1,200 in addition to the base bid of $7,175. Uh, what I had asked uh, before I got that estimate was for a budget not to exceed $10,000 to do the work. I, I still feel that that is probably the amount that uh, should be in the motion. So I'd ask uh, authorization uh, for this work to uh, begin at a total cost not to exceed $10,000 with the funds to be appropriated from the undesignated surface. So moved. Second that. It's been moved and seconded uh, to authorize the town manager to uh, contract with the consulting engineers Flack and Kurtz. Discussion. Councillor Reed. Um, I didn't download this from my website, so I'm not sure what the RFP said, but um, we are talking about both uh, using tower locations on town owned property and dealing with the facilities 2000s identified needs for communications towers as well, right? That That's would. Correct. Okay. There's going to be a, a real emphasis of looking at town property. There's a clear message that, 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 wants to, that people want that to be looked at, as well as seeing how we might reach some of the dark areas of the community. What I mean by dark is the areas where communications signals are weak because of the topography. Seeing if maybe there could be smaller repeaters there instead of uh, you know, larger antenna facilities. Mm -hmm. Councillor McGinty. Does, does that include the fort? where we have that ugly tower, although it's there and probably most people like to go, but it may actually serve a purpose because I think a lot of the dead areas are along the coast, and that may, does that include looking at that tower? This proposal is to look at the town and to look at coverage areas, so it would, it would bring in all, you know, the entire geographic area of Cape Elizabeth in terms of looking at coverage. And you know, determine the best location. I would say this firm, uh, uh, Maureen's checked some of the references. You look at the communities. I know Penny Parson, who's here, is also on her own, checked out some of the communities, and they've gotten very high ratings uh, uh, from everywhere that they've worked. Councilor Fritz. Uh, but would it include um, private companies coming in to provide service? from these spots? Or are we only looking at town uh, ability for emergency and that sort of thing? We're, we're looking at the town ability to provide emergency and public works communication. And we're also looking at the FCC mandated requirement that we allow these, these other businesses that have uh, wireless communication to serve the community. OK. The, the thing that I, I was rather confused at in the um, in, in the price on the, on the back page. Was it talked about, I mean, there, there's an estimate of how much it would cost, the 7175 Then it talks about optional services, investigating non-tower alternatives such as PCS over cable. What, what is that, and would we want to include any of that? I mean, are we talking about more money in order to get? I think the 10000 is fine. Most of the work will be done by this Ann Bates uh, 
who's the one who lives in the Boston area. Further discussion? <coughs> what's the Councilor Barry. What's the estimated timetable? It, it was fairly short term. I, Maureen's had most of the discussions with them. I don't recall the exact, but you know, we're looking like a, like a two month okay. process. It depends. A lot of it is we have these different meetings in there. Yeah. And you know, five scheduled meetings. It depends on when we schedule those meetings. It's okay. uh, that's you know, usually the delay with anything isn't getting the work done. It's it's the the time between meetings. Okay. Bert, Councilor Fritz. Right. What do you see as the people that this consultant will be working with? Will this stay with the planning board, with town staff, with back to the Tower Communications Committee? It includes, no, it includes a joint workshop with the town council mm -hmm. and with uh, the planning board. Those were originally going to be separate, but we, we hope to have as many of those together. It will include some opportunity to meet with the public as part of the process. It'll include meeting with the public safety chiefs. Uh, but we'll, you know, we're going to try to combine those as much as possible so that uh, you know, we don't have them running up yet, all sorts of meetings that, that gets expensive. Mm. Uh, Councillor Berry. Uh, just one final one. Uh, I, I received a letter from a constituent suggesting that the videotape of the planning board's uh, December 15, 1998 meeting be included uh, as uh, materials that are submitted to the uh, uh, consultant. So I'll just pass along that suggestion. I've had a number of suggestions of that similar vein, and you know, we want, we will let the consultants know what the issues are, and we will share with them the pertinent letters. But to ask them to review, you know, a two-hour meeting, no, just that videotape, and to comment on everything, you know, I my sense is we'll give them a, we're going to try to give them a sampling of the letters, so they know all of the different options that have been recommended. Oh, only the relevant yeah. parts. But as far as you know, asking them to watch a videotape, no, I, don't mean that. I haven't seen that letter. It wasn't shared with me. So, uh, but the, you know, as you, I, I don't know if you recall, the council at one point I think had 200 pages, yeah. and a lot of that's boilerplate stuff. And we're not, you know, they've read all that. Uh, they're aware of those issues. But if there's, you know, the specific suggestions as citizens have had of where there's dark spots, or you know, I've heard one that you know that there's an inconsistency in the ordinance. All those types of letters. Uh, that are really pertinent to the issue will be shared with the consultants. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Seven to nothing approved. Item number 100, action to refer to the ordinance committee proposed updates to the building code, the fire prevention code, and the flood hazard ordinance. Mr. McGovern. Yes, the Boca code, the Boca fire code, and the flood ordinance all need occasional updating. This is uh, just that occasional updating. I wouldn't guess the ordinance committee would have to spend too much time on these. We do need to do a little more codification on it, I can see from looking at it, but I would hope that we'd get that in shape and the ordinance committee could look at it. Uh, is there such a motion? I'll move. Councillor Brary. Second. Second. Councillor Watson. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Seven and nothing is approved. Item one, number 101, action to approve a quit claim deed for property at 10 Evergreen Circle, U35, Lot 5-40. Mr. McGovern. Yeah, this is a routine item. It was for some unpaid sewer bills. Uh, those have since been paid. Again, I'd like to thank uh, Deborah Lane for handling uh, all of the sewer liens and the uh, tax and spot of work. And uh, we have an excellent record of collection. These folks, uh, it just foreclosed a couple of months ago or last month. And this. Uh, quickly brought the action to pay it. We appreciate that. I'd move the quick claim deed. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. Do we approve item number 101? Further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Seven and nothing. Are we authorizing the town manager to ex execute and deliver such a deed? We are. I mean, that's what we reflect that. We were doing all of that. Yes, that was the, in the intent of my motion. Execute, acknowledge, and deliver. That was the I, intent of my motion. <laughs> I want to make it clear. That was <laughs> mental telepathy. I just received that. Yeah. Very grateful. Thank you. Um, item 102, action to change the date of the regular March town council meeting from Monday, March 8th, 1999 to Wednesday, March 10th, 1999 at 7.30 p.m. at the town hall. Mr. McGovern. Why? This, uh, the town clerk and one councilor will be unable to attend the meeting on the 8th attending a meeting and it's customary for that March meeting when they're attending that meeting 
that we, we push the council meeting off for uh, two nights. Councilor Reed. Just uh, if the town manager would add that they will be on town business. Yes. So moved. <laughs> Second. It's been moved and seconded that the town council meeting date be changed from Monday, March 8th, 1999 to Wednesday, March 10th, 1999 at 7.30 p.m. the town hall. Mark your calendars now. All in favor? Seven to nothing is approved. Item number 103, request to participate in the Coalition for Equitable School Funding. Mr. McGovern. Yes, this also came up last year, and uh, some of you may recall Charles Greer, who was a member of the school board at the time, came and was very concerned that the town might fund this. Uh, they're asking for $3,468. Uh, as you look at what they uh, feel proud about having done over the last few years, while some of it has helped us, some of it has not. And, uh, I uh, don't feel as though we, it would be the best investment of $3,468. Sir, a motion. Council Reed. Mr. Chairman, I move that we do not participate in the Coalition for Equitable School Funding. Second. I second. Been moved and seconded that we do not uh, participate in the Coalition for Equitable School Funding. Sir, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Seven to nothing. Oh. Okay. We have, an, we have an item that's out of order. Uh, it's item 105. It's to consider a request to discharge at the Cumberly, Cumberland County Registry of Deeds uh -oh. condemnation proceedings dated September 9, 1992 of so-called Scout House located at 1231 Shore Road. Mr. McGovern. I think everyone's familiar with this property. Uh, it was in real, real tough shape, and the current owner of it uh, fixed it up uh, enough to get by. Uh, we do have a, a new owner who, uh, not a new owner yet, but a new uh, person who was in the process of acquiring the property has uh, a option on it. And I had to think about that for a second. And uh, one of the things when they were researching the title, they found it was still clouded by this uh, condemnation proceedings. Uh, the town, because it's no longer right, could not enforce it anyway since it dated back that far. So it's merely clearing the title so that uh, hopefully something positive could develop uh, on this property. Is there a motion? I'm so moved that uh, we can. It's been moved and seconded Requested. that the language uh, <laughs> set forth in item 105, which is to discharge at the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds condemnation proceedings dated September 19, 1992. And I would move that the town manager be authorized to execute, acknowledge, and deliver such a discharge with uh, any accompanying documents required by the Registry of Deeds. And seconded by Councillor Reed. Discussion, hearing none, all in favor? <laughs> Seven and nothing. Yeah, yeah, but the reason I'm wordy is because <laughs> these title questions can come up to haunt us, as this one did from years ago. And so I think we should be specific. And it's with the chair's thanks, Mr. Berry, that uh, you. you were so specific. Very grateful for your consideration. We have a uh, citizen's discussion of items not on the agenda. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're a citizen. Councillor Reed. I was a citizen first. Um, I think that as uh, many people know, in the month of February, uh, councillors that are running for re-election often make that announcement. I would like to um, state publicly for probably the fifth time <laughs> that I will not be seeking uh, re-election, and I certainly hope that those interested will uh, take out nomination papers and have a successful campaign. Thank you. If you need lessons, check with Mrs. Carson to get a lecturer on the subject. <laughs> Are there any citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda? Hearing none. Uh, the next item, item 104, is action to enter executive session to begin the annual evaluation of the town manager and to discuss property acquisition slash disposition matters. Is there such a motion? I so move. Second. Councilor Berry, seconded by Councilor Fritz. Um, it is not anticipated that 
Well, I certainly don't anticipate that we will be coming back into public session tonight. Um, for that reason, uh, have a good evening.